just a flat color. Um, I mixed the, my paint with a glaze medium so it's translucent and you can kind of see through it and it's also workable so I can add texture to it either by putting pressing folded paper in or wiping it off with paper towels sorry Ford um, or scratching it off or you know however you know scraffito I've got some you know sticks I use to take off the paint and then I'll, I'll keep building up layers like that putting them on and taking them off to get the background color and then when I get to the design part, um, I, I try to stick to the, um, I mean, I do a lot of pieces that don't look like rugs. <laughs> a lot of my customers put them on the wall. But I try to stick to that, to the classic thing of, of a darker color at the end or a border or whatever, because I'm making a rug. Um, and, and then I, I add the designs, um, I use stencils a lot and I make all my own stencils because, you know, it's like whatever pops into my mind at the time, you know, it's kind of like, I never dreamed about being an artist. I always wanted to be a craftsperson, you know, since I was in high school. I, when I finished high school, I, you know, was, I graduated early, um, because I skipped a grade and stuff. But my parents were still like, okay, now you either have to go to college or get a job. Well, you know, the only jobs back then was like Jack in the Box. I lived in California. And uh, for a 16-year-old girl, you know, basically working at Jack in the Box for $1.35 an hour. And I wasn't really interested in, school, in college. Um, and, but I was interested in the, kind of hippie lifestyle of making stuff and being self-sufficient and there was a, a weaving studio in Del Mar just north of where we lived in San Diego and I, I started going there and taking classes and and started weaving and that's what my background was you know once you have the bug of making stuff it doesn't just like go away and I There are a lot of us, how do I put this? The first time I did the Washington Craft Show, which was like 2008 or something, I was walking around and most of the, of the people, most of the craftspeople at that show were around my age. You know, a lot of them were older, you know, um, old hippies, whatever. But it's like, why, why do you do this? Why have you done this your whole life? And a lot of them, admitted that it was because it was part of the lifestyle at the time, you know, making stuff and, you know, living outside the grid. Um, part of it is you like to work for yourself. You don't really do well working, being bossed around by somebody. Um, all of those things that kind of, that are social things, but then work in tandem with the fact that what makes you happy is making stuff. Mare has this great um, quote in, in Latin, and I don't know the Latin thing, but in English it's making the right thing the right way. And um, so I wanted to keep making stuff, and I at first I started making some wall art, you know, some mixed media stuff, and um, but the first time I ever painted on canvas was I was working, um, it wasn't a paid job, but you know, doing scenery for Actors Community Theater with Jack Schroeder. And the first time I painted on canvas was with Jack Schroeder, painting a set. And it was like, it was what I wanted to do. Marin and I were teaching um, craft classes at Radcliffe Mill, which we owned at the time, and we had someone come in and teach a class on floor cloths. And I had been painting these big, big canvases um, on unstretched canvas. And once it was like, oh, I can paint this and put this on the floor, it just made total sense. And that was, you know, 
20 some years ago, 25 years ago. And, you know, I just started doing it. I kind of fell into it. The first show I applied to, I think, was Artscape. And I got in, and um, the vision... Uh, back then, my work was less decorative. I mean, it was real um, kind of like <clears throat> off-the-wall visionary and stuff like that. Abstract. Well, you know, I would have, I did a lot of things like, like this. Um, che Guevara saying, you know, what are you doing? <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> you know, stuff that fit in perfectly at, at the Visionary. So I did a show at, at Visionary and then, you know, got started doing shows. And since then, you know, I have I haven't really taken a break from doing shows. But by then, I was also getting into the elite shows. So I could really just do four, five, maybe six shows a year, and it would be be enough. Did you know, they bring up your game? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, when you, I've done the Smithsonian show three times now, and, you know, when the, you want to do your best when you're doing a show like that. You know, because you know who's going to come see your work. Um, you know, um, you know, it's not, it's not, I think if you asked any of us, Bob Ortiz or Rob Glebe, um, or any of us who spent our lives making craft, you know, our goal was never, I want to get rich. No, I mean, you want to be able to support yourself and make what you want to make, and make something good. And that's basically it. But I Are still want to do something like, like last year for Juneteenth, um, they asked me to, you know, do something. And I made a bunch of, I silk screened a bunch of posters, you know, um, with, you know, different images and words on them. And I hung them up on a clothesline, and I said, free, free art, you know. and. They were gone in like 10 minutes. <laughs> you know, I mean, I like the idea of, of making, not just making work accessible to more people, but, um, but trying to figure out a way to get more people to make art or craft.